If you're listening to this podcast, it means you're ready, no more than ready, to have a major breakthrough in your business. You're hungry for change and you're hungry for growth, and that's why you're feeding your mind right now with all this valuable information. But to drive those changes, to be really smart about what you're doing, and to make the right choices before you take massive action, you need help from someone who's been there, someone who's going to coach you through it, even just someone to get you started on your journey. That's why Tony Robbins is offering a free one-to-one business strategy session from one of his top business coaches, a $600 value, completely free, no strings attached. That's right. If you're listening right now, you can go to TonyRobbins.com CEO and sign up for a free session with a member of Tony's team who's helped business owners like yourself overcome their obstacles and set them on the path to success. Hey guys, it's Annie Yorg, Editorial Director for Robbins Research International. This week, we're bringing you to the Ask Gary V Show. Gary V, or Gary Vaynerchuk, is a serial entrepreneur and CEO and founder of VaynerMedia, a full-service digital agency servicing Fortune 500 clients across the company's four locations. Gary's also made his mark as a public speaker, venture capitalist, New York Times bestselling author, and he's been named to both Crane's and Fortune's 40 Under 40 lists. He also hosts his own podcast, called the Gary Vaynerchuk Audio Experience, and of course, the ever popular Ask Gary V Show. It's a business and marketing focused YouTube show with over 800,000 subscribers. Tony recently stopped by the Gary V Show to talk about business, wealth, strategy, and psychology. On the show, they talk about what it means to be unshakable, the power of gratitude, and they share their morning rituals with each other. They also give advice to entrepreneurs and business owners on how to stay focused and keep their mental edge when things get tough. So you don't just achieve financial freedom, but true fulfillment. Legend in the room. You know what I really like, Tony, and I'll just get right into it? Thank God for your documentary, because people realized that you cursed, and that gave me the air cover. People are like, oh, Gary, it's okay that you curse now. I'm like, Phew. thank God. I was pumped. People are like tweeting, like, Tony curses like Gary. I'm like, yeah. I used to bring you to my talks so that people would feel good about me after listening exactly. to you. So we're doing the same thing for each other. Tony, for the quarter of a person that is watching right now on live stream and on the show that doesn't know who you are, why don't you give me the one second thing? And, and obviously, today's a big day. New book. You look good in this shot. It's a good one. This is pretty quick. Your last money, it was a finance I book. I didn't write a book for 25 years. I, I like writing books like I like selling my organs to the black market. You know, I hate it, but I really wanted to write a book that would protect people because you know we're in the eighth year of a bull market, second largest in history. Everybody knows a crash is coming. There's all this volatility. I like but this But I want subject. to really protect people, but more importantly, show them how a crash is one of the greatest economic times in your life if you're prepared for it to leapfrog from where you are to where you want to be. So if you're a millennial out there and you got all this debt from school still, it's crazy. I know how stressful it must be for you. Bottom like line is, subjects. you can literally jump during this time. Or if you're a baby boomer and you didn't get started till way too late and you think it's too late, it's not too late in these situations because the corrections provide opportunities like never before and people just aren't prepared for it. So I have a partner named Peter Malouk. Yep. He's been rated, the, he's the only man in history rated the number one financial advisor in the United States, three years in a row by Barron's, two years in a row by CNBC, and this last year Forbes, this year Forbes just came out with their first list and he's number one. So I want people to know I'm, I'm his partner, I'm on his board of directors, but he has grown his business from nothing in basically 2008. He grew it to two billion during the worst economic time because he warned everybody, there's gonna be a crash, Here's what you're gonna do so you don't lose money, and here's what you're gonna do so you make more money during the crash than anybody imagined. So with no advertising to two billion. Now he's when I joined him a year ago, our partners it was 17 billion, and we're now 23 and a half billion in assets because this guy knows what he's doing. So I took the best of what I learned from the 50 best investors in the world, from Warren Buffett to Ray Dalio to Carl Icahn, shrinked it down into just something. Really not, four by hours. the way, yeah, nice size. Yeah, my last one's 670 pages. Yeah, different right? size, right? My, my whole focus here is destroy the fear with real results, with a real strategy, make it a playbook and get people so they can really win. For my audience, um, I don't know if, I don't talk about this often, but I've mentioned it a couple times in the vlog, both Wine Library, yes. my family business, and VaynerMedia were built out of horrible crashes. Yes. You know, I got involved in Wine Library full time in 99 and just as I started getting going, 9-11 happened and the 2000 crash happened and VaynerMedia was started in 2009 right on the back of all the issues. So for me, I'm a big fan of this and I will say one other tidbit. There's a lot of youngsters who are watching who are on the flip side, are not sitting with debt, who yes. are making some money being influencers, have found themselves into some quick 50, 100, 
Nothing will turn $50,000 in cash into millions of dollars quicker than a bust. Yeah, that's uh, so correct. let me, let me well, a bus that you participate in. Well, you know, a, oh, right. So like, so that's it, right. So, so here's that. something you might find this interesting. Yeah. I am sitting on more cash, and not because I've made more. I am actively sitting on cash right now because my hope is that there is a meltdown and I can buy things for twenty cents on the dollar, five cents on the dollar. How long have you been in cash? About a year and a half. Yeah. So you are Talk. perfect. You're a perfect Talk. person to chat with because I would have the same mindset before. Yes. After interviewing all these people, I learned some really interesting facts. First of all, trying to time the market. Impossible. Yeah, and Warren Buffett said Impossible. Me, listen, all these market forecasters you see on CNBC, he said their whole purpose in life is to make fortune tellers look good. He goes, yeah. no one can do it, That's exactly I right. can't do that it. That I know. So, but logically you say, I'm waiting for the crash because it's gonna come. But while people are waiting. People are making money. 100%. Unbelievable amounts of money. 100%. 250% since 2008. How about just since November with the president, it's 14.5%, right? So tell me how I'm doing this wrong or right. What I'm also but, doing with the rest of my activity, because yeah. it's not a it's a piece of my wealth, I'm being ultra aggressive and driving the other way there and playing on both sides of the extreme. Yeah, I get it. The, the, the whole so like not secret. real estate yeah, or like, yeah. The whole secret is diversifying obviously That's it. and knowing where you're strong and where you're weak. But what people should know about the market because it's really important, the stock market has provided, you, know, you and I have know a million people that have made a fortune and then go rock. That's right. Whether it be an athlete or That's an right. actor or anybody else. Unlimited nature, people. Because right? no matter how, you never, uh, what's his name right now? I just saw uh, 50 Cent just went bankrupt. He made $100 million on vitamin water because he got a tip. He made like $400 million and broke. Uh, he's about to go through to the divorce. Uh, what's his name? Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. Made $750 million, three quarters of a billion, and they say he's going to go bankrupt now. He spent $30,000 a month on wine. <laughs> so you should have got I him. I got a couple pieces of that. <laughs> but the point yeah. of the matter is, you don't earn your way to a fortune. The way you have a fortune long term is you make money your slave. You and I have done it through multiple businesses, yes. right? But the other way to do it is through the investing. And I always tell people how great your business is, you should have a money machine on the right side of you with no employees, with no moving parts. It takes 15 minutes a year once you know what to do. That's what this is. But let's talk about the market for a second. People wait to try to time the market. Yes. So watch this. And first of all, you get a correction every year. People are overreacting and I tell people the market never took a dime from anybody. Only you did that because you got fearful. Yep. So last year, since 1900, 116 years, we've had an average of one correction a year. Correction, by the way, for people who don't know it is when it goes from a market high, you drop by 10% up to 99% because at 20% or more, it becomes a bear market or a crash, okay? So we get one of these every year. So last year in January, Worst January in the history yep, of the market. I remember. $2.2 trillion meltdown. Yep. People are freaking out. Market drops 900 points in a day. All the wealthiest people in the world are Davos. Yep. They yep. interviewed Ray Dalio, the number one you know, hedge fund guy in the history of the world. And? You know, a large hedge fund, 15 billion, he's 165 billion. You need a $5 billion net worth and 100 million to talk to him. Yep. I got him to share with me. They put him on TV. They say, what do we do? Is the end coming? He goes, it's a correction. He said, go read Tony Robbins' book. I explained a theory of how, I made, how I've made 85 Did you sell some copies there? <laughs> You're like, yes. But, but, but I got him to give me the answer. Yeah. He's made money 85% yeah. of the time in 75 years. But here's what you need to know. 80% of those corrections never become a bear market. They all correct back, just like last year. But if you sold, you lose. Of course. But then let's look at the crash. Crashes happen every five years on average. We've gone eight without one. That's mm -hmm. why we're due for one. And you're mm -hmm. right to be somewhat prepared. Mm -hmm. But while you're preparing, there's opportunity that's happening because, first of all, every bear market lasts on average a year, goes down 33%, but you don't lose 33 unless you sell it. That's and right. the one thing I want people to hear. In two centuries of American business, every single bear market was followed by a bull market. So you remember 2008, people lost 50%. This is they where, where, they this where 69%. This is where Buffett wins. Buffett's got a, talks about Buffett this. is so, it's such a great concept. I, I believe in it so much, which is, Unless you're betting on America disappearing, you will win. For centuries. That's it. That's it. And we're That's keep, the punchline. We're going to keep growing. And by the way, every month on average, we have a new high. So, so when you hear so, it's high, oh my God, it's going to crash. It's high. But let me give you one more. Please. This is the timing, and this will maybe the payoff for you. The payoff is I, would, I just did the J.P. Morgan Alternative Investments Conference in Miami. You got to be a billionaire to attend. You have to prove it with your net worth. There's 400 yep. people there. It's an amazing group. J.P. Morgan did a 20-year study, and Schwab did one also separate. They found in the last 20 years, the S&P 500 gave you an 8.2% return. So you're doubling your money every yep. nine years. Yep. Pretty cool thing. But what they found was, if you were out of the market 
on the 10 best training days in 20 years, instead of 8.2, you have 4.5, almost half as much money. If you miss the top 20 days, trading days, in 20 years, one day a year, you're doing, yeah. you're doing trying yeah. to be the right yeah, timing, yeah. you got a 2% return. You might as well a ton of sense. If you miss the top 30 days, you lose money. Makes a ton of sense. In 20 years. Makes sense. So the most difficult, the dumbest thing you can do is be out of the market, not you. Just no, no, I get it. Cause you I'm, plenty be in the in the, market, I'm plenty in the market. I'm plenty in the market. Because uh, I believe and, in it. And then also being prepared. So Tony, listen, I, first of all, one of my favorite things about you from afar, we get to hang once in a blue moon, random yeah. calls here and there, but from afar, you know what I love about you? You, you fucking hustle. <laughs> like, I feel like you're, the book came out today, you're freaking everywhere, doing your thing, that's what you're good at. We have a very large audience of a, like you're good, I know you're good, what you're doing, but here we have a real awesome opportunity because I think we're gonna go deep in a narrow field. Yeah. So the majority of these people, I don't think are, are looking at the stock market. I, I even look at the characters here. Yes, the I way know. they think of, yeah, the way they're thinking about the stock market, so different. In a world where you might not have cash and where you might have debt, or if you're not even in debt, you just don't have a lot of cash. Talk to me about somebody sitting with $10,000, which by the way, for a high percentage of this is still a ton, Correct. but is there anything that, if they have $1,500, are they, should they be out of the market? Like what are they, like I know we're going very, very, very micro here, yes. but I actually want to bring value. No, My p- payoff is actually bringing value to everybody I, watching. I'm, I'm Go ahead. Say, I give an example in the book here. And I'm gonna take a phone call. Get ready for phone calls. Chris, you ready? Yeah, yeah. All right. So, Forget just the $10,000. What matters is the system you put in place. The shit you do randomly every now and then because you got money is not gonna help you much, right? <laughs> Especially so what, if it's a fucking fat whip or a watch. <laughs> yes. I don't even wanna start. So the number one pe- most important financial decision for everyone watching, everyone in this room, really, we all know, you gotta become an owner instead of somebody that is constantly you know, utilizing products. In other words, if you have an iPhone and you don't own Apple, what's wrong? You're a consumer, you're not an owner. You gotta That's become cute. an owner. How do you do it? Every person in this room has got, regardless of whether you think you have the money or not, to make the most important financial decision, which says to be an owner, I have to take a percentage of my income, and no matter what, off the top, automate it so I don't see it, put that in an investment account. Now, what's the number? You might say, I can't, Tony, I'm starting my business, I'm strapped. I tell all business owners, the example of a gentleman, true story, Theodore Johnson, 1950s, works for EPS, guy never makes more than 14,000 in a year. He retires with $71 million. He gives away $35 million while he's still so alive. So good. I need to How is that out. possible? A friend of his did what we're teaching. Comes to him and says, I'm going to make you rich. He goes, I'm not rich. I make 14 grand a year, right? He says, I'll make you rich. I'm going to put a 20% tax on you. He goes, what are you talking about? I can't pay my bills as it is. He said, listen to me. Adjust. If the government gave you an additional 20% tax, you'd bitch, you'd yell, you'd scream, and you'd pay it because you have to and your brain adjusts. But that money goes in this investment account. The compounding of that account made him $70 million and he ever made it in 14 million. Andy, do you have Facebook stock? Because of all the chatter we always have in here? Like that's the punchline, right? Like we know because we live in this world for the last yes. three years. I've been yelling and Andy will tell you, not yet, um, that uh, just buy, we know Facebook's underpriced. Like that's but, even but, narrow. But here's what you gotta be careful of. And this is something Ray Dalio taught me, one of the smartest men on the face of the earth. He said, Tony, I don't care what it is you know. You're gonna invest in what you know because you have certainty. Of course. Right? Whatever you know is gonna drop 50 to 70% sometime in your life. That's right. And he said if it's later in life. Which is why diversity straight. matters. That's yes. why the diversification matters. But let me give you the guy. But, so but let's talk about that for a minute. Let's yes. And Ray's right. Like that's just non-debatable. That's, that's totally data. Non-debatable. Yes. It is interesting to see where. So you don't want to, what I'm saying is you don't want to just own Facebook. Cor- of course not. You've got to have across the board. Of course. Because you but there is, have the best one. There is, a, have Facebook, there is an interesting that. debate that if you're actually knowledgeable about a sector. Yes. And you're only putting two to $4,000 a year to work. That's an interesting debate. It's, it's an interesting and by debate. the way, and by the Netflix way, when you're and Amazon. Young, when yeah. you're this young, you can also be more heavily oriented stocks. You can take more sure. losses because you have more time. But think of it this way. Just go back to compounding as a simple example. Guy in here, I talk about Ready. the book, 19 years old. Dad convinces him to save 300 bucks a month, 4,000 bucks a year. So it's within the range of anybody here you're talking about. Yep. Right? Guy starts at 19, stops doing it at 28. He only puts in 35 grand. He puts it in the market. The market's grown 10% over 30 years, but let's use 8% to be more conservative. Last 20 years has been more 8%. At 8%, that'll grow to 941,000 without another dime. He'll have a million bucks off of $50,000. You're preaching. But on the other hand, his best friend waits till he's 29. He does the same thing, and he, but he has to keep investing to 65. He puts in almost 180 grand, he doesn't get the million bucks. Yeah, the math is the math. You gotta get in. All right, you got some? 
Go ahead. So, <laughs> you know, anyway, inspired I want, to tell, I want to tell everybody, by the it's way. It's going to work. Yeah. I want to tell you guys, You're going to remember this interview your whole life. Let's go. Thank you. I want to tell you, by the way, for everybody watching, this book, my last book, I donated 100% of the profits, 5 million bucks. I'm doing the same thing with this one. We fed 100 million people between my donation and the additional donations I made in 2015. 100 million people last year through my partnership Feeding America. We're going to be 100 million people. 100% of this goes to that. We're going to feed a billion people over the next seven years, to give you an idea. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And it's all coming from the book. While, he's, while Chris is trying to figure out how to dial a phone, <laughs> talk to me real quick about the Netflix uh, uh, documentary impact. I, I, I try to trade culture and attention. Yes. Um, I could taste it in the ecosystem. You've been a known brand for decades. Where does that, where, what was the impact of that uh, documentary? Huge, it's huge because it's taken, you know, I decided to put it on Netflix because it immediately put me in 172 countries and they translated it for all those languages. Huge. So the level of distribution, Global. and it's free. You're already there, people are already on Netflix and they got five stars and it took off like crazy. So the concentrate, you know, I went to the, the fight with Diaz versus, uh-huh. uh, oh, there you go. There we go. I went to the UFC sure. fight, and it's like we'll pick it all up. these young guys coming up to me to, that yep. normally oh. wouldn't know. That are like this is Gary Vaynerchuk, and you're on the Ask Gary V show with Tony Robbins. What's your name, and are you excited? Holy shit. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm a huge fan of both of you guys. This is absolutely incredible. Uh, my name is Brandon Dendis, and I'm coming from Denver, Colorado. Love it, man. What's your question? Um, so it's a little bit off topic. I That's okay. We're talking about We're, we adjust. Yeah, the right now, but um, you're, both of you are a huge um, advocate for gratitude, and that kind of you know delivers your energy and how you guys interact with um, you know everyone, the world. especially you, Gary, on social media and stuff like that. So uh, my question for you is like, how do you become so, grateful? Um, so grateful, yeah, exactly, um, to have this energy, especially from um, Tony's position of just like, you know, I, I dove into your uh, documentary on Netflix, and um, that was actually the first time I was exposed to you. Actually, my father, um, who owns an independent agency in, in Connecticut, um, very successful, um, he quoted you as a huge inspiration. So um, I kind of dove into your content and, and fell into uh, kind of your hands and your, your God in, so. They're big but ass hands too, by the way, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> well listen, thank you for the question, Tony. The, the question is, how do you create the gratitude? Uh, I'm not quite clear yeah, on Yeah, how do you, how, well, I, go ahead. So I, I, how, how, do you become, how do you become so grateful and because of that, you live a life I, of. I, yeah, I yeah. think this is a, actually, this is a great first question, Brett. Thank you so much, because I actually think he nailed it, which is, I actually think he's right. Like, like in, in what I see in you and from others, like gratitude, it's incredible what gratitude does. Well, the two things that mess everybody up are anger and fear. When you let them dominate you, you're in trouble and you can't be angry and grateful simultaneously. It's nope. the antidote, it's the only antidote that really works and you can't be fearful and grateful simultaneously. So for me, the answer is question, I don't hope I'm gonna be grateful. I have a system like anything in life, I, you know, if you're a great pilot, you know how to fly a jet, you still have a checklist because if you miss the checklist, the consequences are too big. So I'm not a big meditator. Uh, my meditations have been active, it's been physical, it's been in nature, it's been ripping things open, it's being on stage. But I started a few years ago doing what I call priming. And what priming is, is most people think their thoughts are their thoughts, when really your thoughts have been primed by the environment. That's why you wanna create the environments like you create and I create, because it makes you be your best. But specifically there was a study where they took a group of actors, they had them go out to 200 people, and the only thing different, they walked up to each person, and the only thing different was they held a half, cup of coffee, they walk up to you as a stranger and go, oh, this for a second, they look down so you can't say yes or no, and you'd end up taking it. They get their phone, they adjust it, they take it back and say thank you. That's the whole thing. Same facial expression for every person. Only difference, half got an iced coffee, the other got hot coffee. Now, 30 minutes go by. They send out an assistant, a research assistant with a clipboard, and they come up to these same individuals and say, if you give us two minutes of your time, we'll give you $20. Will you just read these three paragraphs and tell us what you think of this character. There's a couple questions. They read the three paragraphs and they say, what do you think of the main character in this little story? 81% that were given iced coffee say the person is cold and uncaring. 80%, a 1% variance of those who are hot coffee say the person is warm and connected and caring with nothing else but coffee 30 minutes earlier, ice cold. I could tell you 50 of these. So what I do 
is I get up every morning and I make a radical change in my state and I have a simple deal with myself. I prime for 10 minutes every day. Because if you don't have 10 minutes, you don't have a life. There's 100%. no excuse. So I come in, I do this radical breathing change, these three sets of 30 breaths where I bring the air in and explode it out my nose because you know, I'm sure you know from Eastern philosophy, the, the breath is like the string on a kite. The mind is the kite. Yep. You can change the mind through breath. Yep. So I do this radical breathing, it takes a minute. Then I do three things for three minutes, really simple. I take three minutes and I focus on three specific individual things that I'm grateful for, but I don't think about them intellectually. I step into the moment, yep. remember it, feel yep. it, and just, and so what it does is it activates it not as yep. a thought, but as a biochemistry. Then I do three minutes of prayer and blessings, starting with my family and moving out to everybody, my clients, friends, people I meet. Yep. And then I do three minutes on what I call three to thrive, where I focus on three important outcomes that I have that I want to accomplish, but I don't think about want to accomplish it. I see it, I feel it, the experience is done, I feel grateful. I often That's go, your move. I, I actually go 15 or 20 minutes after because it feels so good, but what's happened is now you're primed. You're yep. not hoping you're in prime time, you are in prime time. And to me, that's how I do it. And once you prime yourself, you start noticing things to be grateful for all the time. And when I asked Sir John Templeton, well, the first billionaire investor, international investor in the whole world, started with nothing, built to that. When I asked him, I said, what's the secret to wealth? I'll never forget. He looked at me and smiled and he said, Tony, it's what you teach. And I said, well, I teach a lot of things. Which thing? And he goes, gratitude. So he goes, you and I, how many billionaires do you and I know that are miserable human beings and they're so unhappy? He said, they're poor. And if you've got a billion dollars, but you're frustrated and angry and sad all the time, your life is frustrated, angry, and sad. How many people don't have nothing, but they're grateful for their family, or for their health, and they're there? To, so that is the game. To, really me, to me, it comes down to its cousin, which is perspective. Yes. So I do something very similar. Every single day, I make pretend that my mother, dad, sister, brother, wife, or children are killed. Now, I know this is a different version of it. <laughs> I know, you didn't expect that one? I, <laughs> you crazy son of a I know it's a little. I know it's a little different. Yes, they get stabbed in the eye, and then they take out the. Yes, the groin. like it's, it's it's sometimes even in detail. But I will tell you, it's very fleeting. It oh, usually happens within the twenty. But here. I promise you, I know it's a little left field. It's insane what that perspective does for me. Uh, yes. Nothing, and I feel well, it's it. Contrast. And I feel it. I, I and I feel it in my works. soul. Contrast. And works. and and it just makes every bad thing. And by the way and I'm sure for your business, when you're the last line of defense, uh, you know how they say occupation on the doctor form? The last time I filled it out, I said firefighter. <laughs> because that's what I think I do for a living. Like it's just problems. Yeah. Like, my, like when I get done with this interview, I'm gonna look at my phone, seven problems, yeah. seven fires to put out. Like yeah. that's what I do. For me it's perspective. Like I don't understand how people don't get that there's seven plus billion people, that there's so many people that have it worse than you. Uh, look, if you live in this country, I, you know, I feed 100 million, 100 million people a year, I care. But if you live in poverty in this country, you're the one percent. You're not the ninety nine. I know. Two thirds of the planet lives on two dollars and fifty cents a day, nine hundred dollars a year. If you're making eighteen thousand a year, I don't want you to make eighteen thousand. But you got to start with gratitude that you're one of the richest humans on earth. You're preaching. Feel like it, but you are preaching. D Rock, uh, don't produce the show. Hello, this is Gary Vaynerchuk, and you're on the Ask Gary Vee Show. Oh, Yo. there's no fucking way I got this lucky. <laughs> <laughs> you're on, man. What's your name? Where are you from? Uh, Miguel from uh, Los Angeles, California. Awesome, Miguel. What can we help you with? Okay, um, so, god damn, hold on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so, um, I'm 20 years old. I'm in college right now. I'm in my junior year. The hours are really crazy because I'm going to school for game design. That's what I really want to do. But okay. I really want I really want to be able to just purchase my own game studio. Okay. Um, so I also um, I work part time. I have um, I just started a marketing business just to try and bring more money in. But this is the first business thing I've ever done, and I'm trying to um, start my own gaming YouTube channel just to get my name more out there and learn how to put my learn basically how to get on my own following yep. and become an influencer for video games myself. Okay. My question is, how uh, how do you know whether or not you're trying to basically take too much on? Right, are you stretching yourself you, in? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I want to know. I got like, it, Miguel. How do you know when you get to that point? I got it. Tony, this is such a classic question for a lot of entrepreneurs. Yeah. You've done it, I've done it, we've yeah. lived our lives, right? Yeah. Like, you know, like what, where does, where does doing a lot of different things to see if there's upside in it, which all my great things have come from. Me too. Um, stop and where does it start to, you're taking on too much and now you're trying to do everything which means you're doing nothing. Yeah, uh, first of all, I, I tell most people, thank you for the question. 
most people who start a business very often will start two and three, four more. And the reason they do it is because the first one isn't succeeding or they no longer they have They lack patience. For exactly right. And so what happens to that person is they're never going to be successful in most cases, unless they get lucky. You can get yeah. lucky, you can bounce across something that's easier to do. But most people are always looking for that next level. What my view is, is it's great to test all these things, but you got to find what is your flagship? What is it that you're going to commit your soul to? Because if you don't do that, the inevitable challenge is going to come up and you're going to then move on to something else 100%. that's more enjoyable. And so the other thing I look at is business is about constantly, not only adding such massive value, doing more for others than anybody else, but it's also simultaneously about your own psychology. It's your ability to go through thresholds of control. Um, it's like, I can remember when I didn't have $50,000 to keep the doors open on my company. I had 12 employees and 11 wanted to quit because they hated the person running the show. And $50,000 would be like 500 million to me today. And I figured out how to get through that threshold. And once I did, like all the problems related to that were handled. I know you've done this as well. And then I, you know, I had a $5 million lawsuit that was totally unfair and unjust. And I finally had a, just the amount of time, energy, and yeah. money I had to bite the bullet and do it. And five million was more than I could remember. Then I had a partner who took a company that was losing a million dollars a day and turned it to 1.5 billion in positive EBITDA. I'm not mentioning names, Amway. Um, <laughs> and he wanted me to join him in business with some other partners, not doing the multi-level side. Did the business, put in 10 million bucks. We all put in 10 million, it was 40 million in debt. But I signed joint and several, which I didn't understand in those days what that meant. And two of my partners were supposedly billionaires and they went broke. We bought some more companies. I ended up with $120 million in debt that I was on the hook for. No one else had any money. And I'm getting up to do a seminar wanting to throw up. It was a new threshold of control. So you know when you ski or you snowboard and you think you're maybe you're just new at it and you think you're going down a blue or green and it turns out to be a double black <laughs> and you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Right? And so you have two choices. One is you start to go down and you freak out and you're gonna die, you slam on the ground and try to hang on for dear life, or the other is baby, you focus on where you wanna go and you, and you find go. a way to curve, you find a way to cut. And once you do it a couple of times, you get you used know, to it. You have no more fear of that element. Now my biggest one out of that, that led me to a billion. I have 31 companies now to give you an idea, seven different industries as diverse as like, uh, you know, stem cells to virtual reality. We have the exclusive to the NBA now in virtual reality, give an example. We do, I got 1,200 employees, we're on three continents, and we got $5 billion in sales. But I did that because I first stayed on one freaking yeah, thing, exactly I got right. so masterful at it that I, 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 the way I look at it, I'll give you one more metaphor. I, you, probably not old enough to remember this, but I'm old remember a guy named I'm pretty old. Mel, I forget his name, he was a the guy that-, that Mel's that, Diner, the no, great no, no, 80s no, 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 sitcom? No. <laughs> no, the guy that looked for gold on the Spanish galleon, I forget his name, Mel, I remember this, but anyway, he found a half a billion dollars in gold, but it took him like 31 years <laughs> to do it. And you can't live on that. Maybe, he's, maybe he loved the journey though. No, no, he did not love the journey. Okay. His son was killed on the journey. Well, that's bad. He, he made no, can you can imagine 31 years of going out there, getting money from investors and showing nothing? I mean, after a year, two, five, 10, some point you hit your breaking point. He never hit his breaking point. So I looked at my businesses back then and I was always looking for the new business that was a great yep. opportunity. I love what I was doing. It's emotionally rewarding, but low margin business. And I had these meetings with a group of billionaires and they said, you have not maximized. And then I saw this guy, Mel, and I thought, I don't believe, I have not the right beliefs. You need three beliefs to be successful in your business at the highest level. You have to believe, number one, what did this guy have to believe to go 31 years? He had to believe, number one, that the treasure was out there. Number two, he had to believe, I'm gonna find it. And number three, he had to believe it was gonna be worth it. Yeah. If you don't believe there's that treasure in your business, you'll You're never finished. find it. And you gotta use those three things to go to another level. Miguel, to answer your question, I've now had a career for 20 plus years. I, at every minute, was running one of two companies. Wine Library or VaynerMedia. There was never a day in my life where I didn't have something that I called the 80% of what I do. That's right. It's exactly what you were saying. Yes, yeah, I, I, I call it the meat, the main dish. You can go and have side dishes and if your meat, if your steak is perfect, yeah. you'll always be able to absorb the losses right. because they're smaller losses and then when something over here becomes bigger, you can turn that into the main part and that could become the steak. Too many people have all side dishes and no steak. I always say something else about it too. Most Let's people do another phone call. massively overestimate what they're gonna do in a year and they underestimate what they can do in a decade. So what happens is they get all disappointed and frustrated and they yep. don't stay with the game. Talk to me about people, lack of patience. This is something, you know, I've been pounding patience. You've been pounding patience? Yeah, I, 
This is, this is, I, I actually, do you know that I, I genuinely think I'm the most patient? Do you know that I think I I'm a, a lot of deceit do you, do you, this. <laughs> Do you, know, do, you know, do you know that I genuinely call myself a tortoise in a hare's costume? Don't let my energy or my stage presence confuse what I've actually been doing. Yeah, no I get it, I'm teasing. I know you are. I know. But, but, I think, but, but the reason I want to put it out there is I think it's an important thing that, uh, it, it's an enormously important variable. I think so too. Let me mention one thing with it. You really, I think all businesses though, we've talked about focus, I just want to add one yeah. last piece to that before we go what you're saying. I think all businesses should be running two businesses, the business you're in and the business you're becoming. Because if you only run the business you're excited about, you're going to become, you're going to miss the cash flow of managing your business. If you only focus on the day to day, you're not anticipating the competition. This is Gary Vee, and you're in the Ask Gary Vee Show with Tony Robbins. Who's this? Yo, Gary, it's Nico from Chicago, man. Nico, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, man. What's your question? All right. So, uh, just a couple sentences to give you, uh, you know, a cap of what I do. Uh, I'm building two things right now, which is small business, my creative studio and my personal brand. Okay. So my creative studio does like photo, video content for small businesses and my personal brand is just my creative content and me documenting my life through Instagram and YouTube. Okay. So I'm wondering should I leverage, or should I use my leverage and community for my personal brand and funnel that into my, you know, my business or should I keep them separate or what, should I, what do you think I should do? Well look, obviously I know why you're asking this because I've lived this life, right? Now the thing that's interesting about me and I've talked about this is a lot of my audience doesn't necessarily represent the clients of VaynerMedia. VaynerMedia does, you know, gonna do $125 million in revenue this year and it's mainly Fortune 500 companies who are not necessarily watching my 25 minute vlog. Now, what I knew about being in the business you'll be in the future is that the technology would drag people down and that the 53 year old cliche executive would eventually watch YouTube and be on Instagram. I would tell you, as, here's what I would say to you brother, intent matters so much. As long as the content you're putting out and the stuff you're doing creatively isn't just a gateway to get clients just because of that, I think you'll be perfectly fine. It's gonna happen naturally anyway, first and foremost, because people are gonna become aware of you. I think, you know, listen, I wrote a book called Jab, 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 Right Hook. I think it's okay on your personal yeah. brand once in a while say, hey, is anybody looking for small business clients? As long as that's three, six, seven percent of your, and I'm, that's an arbitrary number. As long as your audience doesn't feel like that's your intent. Look, Tony and I get compared to a lot of people that we are opposite of. But it's our energy and the way we roll that people think we look that part. The intent matters. So I would tell you that, you know, as long as you're asking instead of making, you win. Do you know how many people have landing pages where they get you in and you got some content and then all of a sudden you gotta pay to keep going? That's making people pay. Putting out good okay. stuff to the world and then maybe some of it coming your way. Jab, 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 right hook was give, give, give and then ask. Most people interpret it as give, give, give and then take. That's a very big difference. Okay, okay so, my, I, I, yeah, so my first brand is, is like the complete, like it's exactly what you're describing. It has nothing to do with my business. And it will work. The shit that I enjoy. It will work. If people, you compare it to like so, Casey, dude, like that kind dude, of shit. Dude, if so, do you know how many people have given me business because I'm a Jets fan? That's real. We connected yeah. on the Jets, but it became a, like, absolutely. Speak your truths, have pure intent, work hard, a lot of good things happen. To, and by the way, I heard your structure, your strategy's on point. You've got an 80% stake, you're building personal brand over at 20, you're doing YouTube and Instagram today as we record this, that's right. So you've got every piece in place. Keep going with your intuition. All right, thanks brother, I love you man. Love you too man. Tony. All right. Bye. (laughs) Tony, while we transition, we'll get one more question in here. Uh, What's going on with you in social media? I remember very, 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 the, the last time I reached out to you, I got inspired, I called you, and I said, bro, Snapchat. This was 15 months ago. Um, talk to me about your journey on that. And one other thing that we have to do before we leave, I've never asked you this and I think it's really funny to ask here and you may not remember. I will never forget being at South by Southwest 2008, nine or 10 and I get this email and it says, Anthony Robbins. And then it's a voice email. Yes. And I'm like, I don't know, <laughs> click. It's like, Gary, Tony Robbins. And I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> I don't know if you recall that. Yes, I do. But what I'm curious about is, do you recall why you wrote that email? I don't know that in particular, but I use audio emails much more than regular emails because you know, hear your voice in context. that context, so you can't get that in normal yep. email. Plus, if it's a couple lines, I'll type it, but if yep. it's something has emotion to it, yeah. I want somebody to hear it so I can connect I love them it. as the piece there, so that's it. I love it, yeah. I love it. All right, let's go to this. And, and I'm not gonna letting you off the hook. I wanna know what's going on with you in social. Oh, I'll answer that question. Let's, 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 let's see this person. You got it, go. Hello. 
Hello, this is Gary Vaynerchuk and you're on the Ask Gary V Show with Tony Robbins. Fucking A, it is Gary V. It is! <laughs> you, brother. Who's this? This is Doug, Austin, Texas. Doug, Austin, Texas. I love it, man. My question for you is how can I possibly thank Gary V for pushing me through all these years? Starting with 2007, I'm looking at my 101 wines right now, signed <laughs> by you, Know Your Pal. You were in Austin with the book signing. Tony, love you in shallow how. <laughs> <laughs> this Amazing. Just, I just wanted to call in and give you the gratitude. I'm pumping away with this production company here in Austin, Texas. Just grassrooting it. It's been fun. And I appreciate you just hustling and showing us how it's done, man. I appreciate it. Listen, it's been solid. You, you go impact one solid. other person the right way to do it, and that's more than a payback. But if you f- find yourself in New York or wherever I am, I'm going to be in Austin a couple weeks for, for South by. Come and shake my hand. Send, yes, send an email to Gary. My hair, brother. I will, man. It's good to see you. Thank you for the love. Peace out. Thanks. I forgot about that amazing appearance you made. Was that fun? Which one? The Hollywood, when you became a Hollywood oh, yeah. star. You know what's interesting is uh, the guy that wrote that is legally blind. That's why the story is about seeing the beauty in, in someone, not seeing I the did surface. not know that. And he bought my audio program, because he's blind, he had personal power. He listened to it. He went to the Fairley Brothers, never wrote a movie in his life, sold in film. They'd asked me three times to be in films. I said, look, I'm not an actor. I appreciate it, but no. They sent me this script. They're like, you're in it. it. Made me laugh. I cried. But then what they didn't tell me was, they rewrote that section. The writer didn't do it. He had like a fortune teller doing it. And they said, ah, that's bullshit. If you were stuck in an elevator with Tony Robbins, your life would change. (laughs) So I show up and I start speaking and they didn't tell him and they didn't tell me this is how it came about. So he hears my voice and he comes, Tony Robbins, and tells me the whole story. So cool. Then I go to do the piece and I got Jason Alexander there, right? Yeah, yeah. And I said, look, guys, you wrote this whole thing. I'm on the center. That's not what, yeah. It's not me. I'm just going to do my thing. So I said, let me show it. He goes, well, there's no script. I said, he's an actor, let him act. And so when I healed him like that, when you see him shocked, that isn't acting. He wasn't prepared for it, to give you an idea. We did it over and over again. It was a fun trip. Tony, end with this for me. What has been your journey on social? Where are you, where are you now? What are you excited about? Are you into it? Is it hard for you because you're very busy? Like every, yeah, you know, no. you don't pander to us. I'm no, actually, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm curious to where you're at. This young man right here runs yep. it for me. Yep. So Tyler, he does a great job. But okay. I do all my own personal components. Yep. I get him to go leverage, yep. get the pictures, yep. the graphics, yep. Yep. And all those things. I found um, that Facebook Live is one of my favorite tools at this stage. Yep. Because we get three quarters of a million people. It's Watch like you it. have your own yeah. show. You yeah. just go in there and boom, and yep. it goes. So that tool to me is one of the most valuable tools. But you know, we've got you know a million people on Instagram. Tyler, and, you know, we've got 10 get in million here. People there. Yeah. What, what do you want to see him? This is this is your chance. This is the air cover you've been waiting for. I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna be your prote- I'm gonna be your shield here. This is the right room to do this. Where's the place that you'd like to see him focus a little more on? For me, yes. Had you asked me six months ago, I would have said Snapchat. But yep. now I'll say Instagram Stories. Yep. yep. We're doing it today. He's yep. taking a little uh, run through on it. I love he's, it. He's digging it. It's. You know, it's ephemeral, it's here today, gone yep. tomorrow, yep. but you're, he's able to connect with his fans and give them that little sneak peek behind the scenes of what he's up to. My man. I'd, I'd love to see that. And, okay. I, love, and I love that Instagram is you more your personal life to a great extent. You know, each piece, ha- you know, if you're yeah, going Yeah, Facebook's piece, like mainstream media. Yeah, like, and then, by the way, they ebb and flow, to his point, he's exactly right. Six months ago would have been Snapchat, and, then, like, and tomorrow somebody might buy Vine, create one feature, and we all care. Yeah. It's such, it's a moving market. It's without a doubt, without a doubt. My Thank man. you, brother. It's great to see you. Listen, you got people watching, I want to plant one seed, one seed for you too. Uh, both of us have achieved a lot. I'm sure many of you have achieved a lot too. Success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. This guy is very fulfilled. That's why he works 24 hours a day. His whole hustle is that it fulfills him. Same thing with me. If you don't find what fulfills you, all the achievement's worthless. I had a really cool conversation and I, I talk about it at the end of the book here because money is not going to make you happy. It'll give you resources. It'll give you tools. But you got a two million year old brain that's always looking for what's wrong because it's trying to make you survive. If you're gonna override that, you've gotta learn what it is that's gonna fulfill you most. And if you discover that and you pour all of your juice into that, forget the money, the money will be fine, but what you really will have is an extraordinary life. That's what this character has done for himself because he lives it every single day. I live it every single day. There's nothing short of that that's gonna give you what you want. So hope when you read this, you'll also find there's pieces there about how to master the mind because this is what messes this up. You can be a billionaire and be this miserable. This is the game. Just the like operating thoughts. system, baby. We, like, we're the only creatures on the planet that can think a thought and make ourselves miserable or think a thought and make ourselves euphoric. So 
take control of your mind. That's really the end of the game for you. That's how you'll serve up. Two things, you gotta ask the question of the day. That's what every guest does. So you okay. get to ask a question and there'll be thousands of comments on Facebook and YouTube. So give that a thought of what okay. question you want answered. Okay. Number two, I'm about to take a picture with this man. I'm gonna give away 100 copies of this cool. on Instagram over the next 24 hours. Cool, that's exciting. Question I have is, what is your definition of a magnificent life? I'd really be curious. Like, oh, what's your criteria stuff. for a magnificent life? Which to me is life on your terms. It's different for everybody. I'd love to know what yours is. I'd love to see the variety of people. Thank you, brother. My pleasure. Good seeing you, man. You keep asking questions, <laughs> we'll keep answering them. The Tony Robbins Podcast is directed and hosted by Tony Robbins and Mary Buckheit. Annie Org is our editorial director and occasional host. The podcast is produced by Carrie Song and Tyler Culbertson. Jamie Carvajal and Adriel De La Torre are our digital editors. Special thanks to Diane Adcock for her creative review. Copyright Robbins Research International.